In this video, we're going to look at two more examples of using integration by parts, and we'll see um, some of the different kinds of techniques that come up within these examples. So here in example six, we're interested in evaluating um, the integral of e to the negative x um, times sine of 4x dx. So we see we do have an exponential type function and a trig function. So we have two different types of functions. So we want to think about using integration by parts here. Um, if I follow my ILATE guideline, this says I want to prioritize um, for my u a trig function over an exponential function. So I'm going to choose sine of 4x as my u, and dv then will be the remaining things in the integral of e to the negative x dx. So when we take the derivative of sine, we're going to have 4 cosine of 4x dx. Take the antiderivative here of e to the negative x dx, and that will be negative e to the negative x. Okay, so remember our integration by parts formula is that the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. So we will have for our integral of e to the negative x, sine 4x dx, u times b, or negative e to the negative x, times sine of 4x minus an integral of b du. So let's see, that'll be minus this negative e to the negative x, and then our du of 4 cosine 4x dx. Okay, so before I try to do um, anything else, I want to always try to simplify things a little bit, so I notice that that minus a negative becomes plus a positive, and I can also see that I could take this 4 and pull it um, out in front of my integral. Okay, so notice that I have, let me clean this up a little bit here, so I have plus 4 on the outside. This was just our plus from doing the, uh, the minus a negative becoming plus a positive. So I do have this new integral here, which doesn't appear to be simpler than what I had before. I still have an exponential function and a trick function. It's just a different function. So I go, hmm, how am I going to handle that? Well, let's just see what happens if I do integration by parts again, because it is still a product of two different kinds of functions. So we'll do integration by parts again and see what that gives us. So we'll let u again be equal to the trig part. So u will be cosine of 4x and our dv will be e to the negative x dx. du will then be the derivative of cosine of 4x. So we'll have negative 4 sine of 4x dx and our antiderivative of e to the negative x will be negative e to the negative x. Okay, so this was our second whoops, application of integration by parts, so what are we going to get? So rewriting what we have above, we have our integral of e to the negative x sine 4x dx equals the negative e to the negative x sine of 4x plus 4, and then our integral here of e to the negative x cosine 4x is getting replaced by our uv negative e to the negative x times cosine 4x minus the integral of v du. So that's our negative e to the negative x. Let's see, let's just start it over a little bit further. Let me rewrite part of this so we have a little bit more room here. So we've got our uv, so this is e to the negative x cosine of 4x minus our integral of v du, negative e to the negative x is our v, and our du is this negative 4 sine 4x dx. Okay, it's going off the page a tiny bit. So let's simplify this and see what we're dealing with. So we have e, negative e to the negative x sine 4x. We have this, if I distribute that 4 through, that's minus 4 e to the negative x cosine 4x. Okay, notice I have to be careful with my signs here. Maybe I'll use another color to illustrate where we're changing things. Inside the integral, I have a negative times a negative, so that will become positive. And then I do still have this negative out here. So if I distribute that 4 through, we'll have 
this minus four. Let's say I'm also going to have a four constant here. So if I want to collect all my constant parts together, this is going to be minus four times four or minus 16, the integral of e to the negative x sine four x dx. Okay. So what have we done so far? So we've done integration by parts twice. I now have my original integral here is equal to the sum of these first two pieces and then minus the 16 e to the negative x sine 4x dx. So we think to ourselves for a minute, well it doesn't look like that got all that um, simple compared to what I started with. I actually have exactly the same integral type that I had to begin with. That's actually a good thing for us. We notice that if we keep doing integration by parts again and again, I'm just going to kind of run through this cycle. I'm not going to simplify this, this integral anymore. But because I do have an equation where I have the same thing on both sides, we can solve for our integral. So this is another variation on integration by parts, where you do integration by parts a couple times and you get back to what you had before and then you're able to use that equation to solve for the integral that you're interested in. So what we can do is add 16 copies of this integral to both sides. So I'm adding 16 copies of e to the negative, the integral of e to the negative x sine 4x dx to give me 17 copies of the integral on the left hand side and that equals just the sum of these first two parts on my right hand side All right and then just like we do in um, various algebra equations. I'm going to solve for my unknown here. I'm going to divide both sides by 17 and then at the very end we can add our plus c into our answer. So I'm going to see that the integral of e to the negative x sine 4x dx is equal to 1 over 17 times this negative e to the negative x sine 4x minus 4e to the negative x cosine 4x plus c. Okay, so you want to keep this technique in mind if you notice that once you've done integration by parts a second time, you've come back to the integral that you started with. So I think of this as a solve for it type of integration by parts problem. Okay, and you'll see this kind of thing come up when you have maybe something times a trig function, like this exponential times a trig. Um, I think we see it something with like a log and a trig as well. So you want to keep this um, technique in mind. So let's just look at one final um, application of integration by parts combining with, with various techniques. So we saw one example earlier in our previous video where we had to do integration by parts and then use substitution. We could also potentially have to do substitution first and then do integration by parts. So this will be a, a short integral, but notice that here I could do a substitution where I would let, say, um, w here equal what's inside of my log function. So that would be tan x plus 2. And if I take the derivative of that, notice that the derivative of my tangent function is secant squared we know the derivative of 2 would be 0. So I'd get this u substitution piece, or in this case I have a w substitution. So I could say that this integral is equal to the integral of log w dw. And this is something that we saw earlier. So using integration by parts, we saw this would come out to um, w log w minus w plus c, or that this would then come out to replacing our w here with our substitution, tan x plus 2 log of tan x plus 2 minus tan x plus 2 
plus C. So this is just showing how you might combine U substitution and integration by parts um, in various orders. U substitution first and then integration by parts, or like in our previous example, integration by parts and then U substitution. Please let me know if you have any questions on any of the material from these videos.